And welcome back to Flyboys here in Beaver Creek. It is the Scott Nagy Show. And also joining us uh, every week is Coach Jim Brown. Yes, the Hall of Famer here at Wright State. And before we get into the show, you know, Coach, you were, Coach Brown, you were telling me you had a busy day today, oh, battling yeah. the wind, getting the uh, Christmas decorations down, laking the leaves. And I'm wore out. Oh, no, come on now. You were such in great shape. It's a yeah. great day to rake leaves. Yeah, that is. Yeah, just blow in your neighbor's yard. That's the way to do it. Coach Nagy, uh, your team 2-2 two and two now. Uh, you look at 8-9 and nine overall, but we're into the league season right now. And Coach Brown and I have been talking about this already this season. You look at this Horizon League, and it is so competitive this year. We go to this weekend. Didn't play so well at Detroit, but really showed a lot of courage. The guys came back and bounced back with that big win at Oakland on Saturday. Yeah, we, we, we said that about the league. I think that the, the top of the league is probably not as strong. The middle of the league is better. Uh, yeah. Teams like IUPUI, uh, you know, I think that it's going to be hard for people to go on the road and win games. IUPUI goes up to UIC and wins. And, and so it's going to be it, – it's just going to be a struggle all year. I think it, it's really hard to win on the road. So any game that you can win on the road – obviously gives you a, a leg up on everybody else. Well, the game with Detroit, uh, Davis, the freshman guard, I mean, he was just making shots that were contested. He went off for 48 in that game. Uh, Raiders lost. It, I mean, what can you do against a guy like that? But you said at the end of the game, you were more disappointed with your offense. Guys, just we just couldn't score. Yeah, I, you know, I think people will look at that and, and think that that was the biggest part of the game. I, I think that that just affected everything else that we did. It, it, it affected other parts of our defense. It affected our rebounding, and it certainly affected our offense because early, you know, b before he really got going, we were pretty good offensively, and then uh, we really struggled to get him stopped, and I think it affected everything else. Well, you get to the Oakland game, though. Guys came back, and, and Coach Brown talked about it immediately after it happened. Early in the game, big center, loud and love, goes on the floor, dives on the floor for a loose ball and it seemed like everybody on the bench jumped up and that just energized this team yeah i think that, that certainly was a big play in the game and you know for for a big guy like that to go get on the floor make a play mark goes down and dunks the ball and really in that first half we we, we got every loose ball uh, every 50 50 ball seemed seemed to go our way our guys just just played with a lot of heart put us up 11 we knew that the game prior to that they were down 10 at half and and so we knew that they would make a run and really uh, they, they, kind of, they, they just never got back in the game. They scored the first play of the first uh, second half, and we went down and scored. And then from there, we, we kind of just pushed it out. And I think that, uh, you know, Bill made some big shots when they tried to make a run, and Skyler made a big shot uh, kind of to put it away. Isn't it, isn't it amazing, though, you've coached all these years, with the, what, a little play like what Loudon did can change everything. I mean, it just has such an impact on how your kids react, how the other team reacts. I just thought it was a huge play, and it was real early in the game, but, boy, it changed things. Well, and it, but it just establishes to our players, because we know how important Loudon is to the team, it establishes to our players that Loudon's ready to play, and was, he's ready to go, and, and everybody follows. Everybody gets in line when that happens. It was an unbelievable play. I mean, to see it, it happened right in front of Chris and I, and he just, he flat dove straight out, got the ball, and then, as you said, he recovered it and got it off to yeah. Mark, and Mark went well, I mean, with a body like his, why would he be afraid to dive on the floor? I, you know, I mean, he should be afraid to do it. Well, I think that's how Malachi got hurt yeah. early. He allowed to jump on top of him or near him or whatever because uh, Malachi went down for the count there for a while. Yeah, I, I think actually that the, the Hill Mays okay. kicked him in the face. I and, see. Uh, you know, he probably – he probably stayed down there a little longer than he should, but 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 he got up and he, he was okay. I, I was initially afraid because you know all those bodies went down there, and I've yeah. seen guys before yeah. Yeah. where if somebody goes face first, somebody dives on their head, they get teeth knocked yeah. out, and yeah. so yeah. Uh, that was my biggest concern when I went out on the floor was that he didn't have teeth knocked out. You know, getting back to the Detroit game, you're you're exactly right. They were in that zone defense, and I thought your guys attacked it really well. You had Parker at the high post, you had Loudon in the middle. And, and everything was going fine, and then Loudon kind of tweaked his ankle, and, yeah. and they had to take him out. And I thought that was a huge play in that game. It was. It was. And he, he really wasn't the same player after he did that. I think, you know, he had some concern for that. He, he just uh, – his ankle's still swollen. You know, if you could see it, you'd think that he was really hurt. I think that, right. that there's not much pain anymore. But now, you know, and you know how it is once you sprain an ankle, it's easier to sprain the next yeah, time. Absolutely. And so his yeah. ankle d doesn't have the strength in it. He did tweak it. Uh, I was concerned. I thought he was going to be done for the weekend when it happened. Uh, unfortunately, he came back in the game. You know, Coach, you talked earlier about in uh, the Oakland game especially, but it didn't happen against Detroit, and that was uh, when a team went on a run, really had a dry spell in both the first and second half at Detroit. But in Oakland, 
had an answer. You know, every time they try to put a run on with the way that Cumberland was shooting the ball in the second half, your guys stepped up, especially Bill Wampler and uh, Skyler Potter hit a big three, as you mentioned. That's really good to see guys being able to answer that, especially on the road. It is, and we – I mean, we've been pretty inconsistent all year offensively, I think. I, I, I expect us to be a little bit more consistent offensively, a little better. It uh, uh, certainly was a concern at Detroit, and, and but not the way we started the game. I thought we were in great shape, and we had a good game plan to throw the ball inside. You know, most people shoot a lot of threes against that zone, and we wanted to pound it inside, and we did. Loud was aggressive early. And then, you know, I think that the, uh, the way that Davis played, I think, really affected our guys mentally. Yeah, had a 19-10 to 10 lead at the 12-minute mark. That's when Detroit went on a 28, uh, what is it, 28-6 to 6 or 28-4 to 4 run at that time and took control of the game at that point. Well, Coach, right now, before we go to a break, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the highlights from the weekend. We'll start with Detroit. <laughs> better and we'll go to Oakland and you can see here early we we, we threw the ball in and and uh, loud makes a nice little jump hook there I would still like to see him get to the basket more I want him on a free throw line and it's really made a difference for him uh when since I've told him I want him on a free throw line more I don't even care what percentage he shoots he needs to be on a free throw line more and that was a great possession right there the ball went in went out and went to the opposite side for yeah. Mark. That was just a great possession. They're, they're, now, they're allowed to finish at the basket, which is, is where we want him. And they, they really don't have a rim protector. And, and so it's where the ball should have kind of been all night. He's so much better when he uses the glass as opposed to, you know, trying yeah, to. Yeah, and sometimes he settles for some, some tough jump hooks, I think. And I would yeah. like to see him at the rim more. And that's what I mean. I want to see him on the free throw line more, regardless of what his free throw percentage is. And really, ever since I've told him I don't care what free throw percentage he shoots, he's been shooting free throws pretty good. He looks really good. He yeah. really does. That, is, that, that was the dunk there that, that Mark had against Oakland when Loudon dove on the floor. And they, they really struggled with ball screens. They went under a bunch of Coles. Cole got some easy looks early. And I thought, you know, in the first half there, uh, Cumberland is such a good offense player, we held him to two points, and then he went crazy in the second half. Skyler jumping up and making a three, uh, made a couple of them, made a big one there in the second half. There they are going under a ball screen again, and Cole just jumps up and shoots it. Cole Gentry must like this gym. Remember the three he hit last year, and in this game he had over 20 points. He likes to play at Oakland. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're loud and finishing off the glass, yep. Coach. Yep. I, I've been trying to get him to, to just pump fake more because if he pump fakes, he has to be on balance to do it. And uh, I think that that's helping him a little bit. Well, so much of but, it. But eight yeah. offensive rebounds yeah. in a game, you don't yeah. see that very yeah. often. No, he – well, some, some, of more, some of them are his own misses, <laughs> I know. Right. Believe me, I, I know. Say, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's one of them. Yeah. Hustle play there. But you had 18 offensive rebounds in this game, which is, uh, I think, a season high. He stays right with it there. Yeah. We're, and we're going to have to rebound the ball well uh, when we play Northern Kentucky. They're, they're killing people on the glass right now. There, there, there was that big three for, for Skyler in the second half, and then this, this one kind of put the dagger in it for them when they were making that run. Yeah, Bill came alive in the second half. I don't think he had a three in the first, but – Came alive in the second half. I think he had three or four in the second half. And they yeah. were, every one of them was huge. Yeah. And then, they, you know, they picked up the pressure, tried to press us a little bit, and we were able to run out and get some easy shots on it too. I think, well, I think we were lucky. We obviously shot the ball better yeah. against those guys. All right, Coach, we're going to take a break right now. Be back with more of the Scott Nagy Show. When we continue here at Fly Boys in Beaver Creek, this is Wright State University Basketball. Come celebrate Wright State's 20th Arts Gala on April 13th. Enjoy an incredible evening of performances by our talented art students, plus fine dining and auction items too. All proceeds support arts scholarships. That's Arts Gala on April 13th. Well, Katrina's gone right now. We had her earlier, but we are talking with Scott Nagy. Women's team's <laughs> playing really well. They really love you down there at the station, Coach. <laughs> But uh, we'll continue on here till about 6.30, uh, Coach Nagy, along with Coach Brown. And uh, we have two players going to join us here tonight. Parker Ernsthausen and Cole Gentry will be with us from 6.30 up until 7. Of course, the Raiders split on the trip at Detroit against Oakland and also against the Titans of University of Detroit Mercy. They're 2-2 two two in the league, and they'll go on the road once again this Friday. They'll take on the Norse of Northern Kentucky, the defending regular season champions in the Horizon League. And... Uh, Coach Nagy, you look at this Norse team, you mentioned it just a few moments ago. Uh, this team is, is, is really good. Even though they lost some players from a year ago, they still have the preseason player of the year, Drew McDonald. And uh, 
he's a lot to handle because he can play inside and outside. Yeah, he's the main reason they're really good, and everybody else plays well because of him, to be honest with you. And they, and they have good players, and they have a lot of depth. They play, they'll play 10 or 11 guys, but every one of their guys – plays to a higher level because of, of what Drew McDonald does. And uh, uh, they play off of him. They get easy shots because of him because you have to worry so much about him. And, and so, you know, he, he's definitely somebody that we're going to have to focus on and do a good job of. That's a team that has played fast in the past. Are they doing more of that now from what you see on tape? They're still playing fast. Uh, they, you know, they're going to pick us up full court and try to wear us out. Obviously, we're going to play seven or eight guys. And so we're, we're going to have to control the pace of the game. And uh, I would love, uh, I'm very, very hopeful that even by next year we'll be able to get to, to where we're playing more players and don't have to worry about so much controlling the pace. But right now we're going to have to. Uh, talk about uh, the guys that come off the bench for you right now. Of course, Bill Wampler is coming off the bench right now. He's been able to score, especially in that game against Oakland, uh, and also Skylar Potter. I want to talk about the freshman in Skylar Potter and uh, Malachi Smith, who's going to have to play more minutes now with Jalen Hall, uh, not being uh, to be available for the remainder of the year. How is their progress so far, at least the way you see it? Well, I'd like, I would like to see uh, Malachi play more. And, uh, and he, ha- he plays, he, he's played well in spurts. Like he played great at, at Mississippi State, you know, and then, and then we lose him for a game and then he bounces back. And so I'm just looking for more consistency from him. And really Skyler too, I think both of them, I've spent time talking to him about just being more consistent so that we know when we put you on the floor exactly what we're going to get. Don't you think it's hard for freshmen to make that adjustment? No, here they are. They, they it started is. every game yeah. as a senior yeah, yeah. and they played a lot of minutes. And but, now- but, you know, and you know this by now, Coach, they, you know, they should be a little more used yeah. to it. it. It is hard early. Uh, and I, I think they, they really don't understand for when, you, when you walk into a season just the, the difference in level yeah. of intensity and all those things. And then all of a sudden you get to conference and it goes up another level. And, and so, you know, they, it, it does take them a little bit of time to get used to that. You see some level of frustration once in a while out of, out of both of them. I mean, you know, you just uh, – and that's normal. I mean, it's just normal. But Skyler has hit some big shots. I mean, the thing about Skyler that I like is he'll miss a shot, but that doesn't, that doesn't affect him one bit. He, he just uh, – he continues to uh, have confidence in himself. Yeah, and, I, and obviously uh, he's shooting 35% right now. We would like to shoot, see him shoot a better percentage. But I think as his experience comes and he, he – learns the difference between what a good shot and a bad mm-hmm. shot is because right now every shot looks like a good shot to him and, and I'm okay with that yeah I, I would rather it be that way than me have to try to coerce a guy into them to being issue. confident yeah. in shooting the ball we we can get some of that stuff fixed uh, and so I like his aggressiveness because you need to get him scoring I mean you need to get scoring yeah, we, out uh, of him. yeah we need some energy and scoring off the bench for sure what about defensively uh, on both? I mean, freshman takes a little time to learn the defense. It, it does. And, and so, you know, you go to the Oakland game, and, and both of them made some mistakes in the second half uh, on Cumberland. And it's, it's a little bit how he got going. And then, and then we – and even as a coaching staff, we made some mistakes in terms of matchups and things like that, and that didn't help. Uh, but they, you know, they're, they're, they're still learning the ropes. But, I, you know, I watch and I talk to our seniors about, you know, go, go back and look at your stats. Uh, and, and see how you were then compared to how you are now and all the experience you have and, you know, understanding what routes to take on a ball screen or if there's a baseline screen, you know, which way to go, all those things. They're, they're second nature to you where our freshmen, they're not. They weren't taught those things last year. And so it takes them a little longer, but they're going to get it. You know, they do get help, too, not only from the coaching staff, but I saw Alan Vest, Parker Ernsthausen, offering some advice, too, to these guys where they're supposed to be defensively during practice. Yeah, and it's, it's like I say, for Alan and Parker, it's easy for them for, for a couple of reasons. One, they're both very intelligent players, and number two, they've been doing it forever, and so, so they know exactly what to do defensively, and it's why they get to play a lot. You know, uh, I said this on the radio uh, early in the game the other day, and it was kind of uh, kind of ind- indicated what was going on. But as the game went on, but uh, I-, I said that uh, Cole Gentry's got to be licking his chops because he's finally got to guard his size. Yeah, and a freshman. Guard. And a freshman. And, yeah. and what a job he, <laughs> he did, did on that guy. That guy was yeah. averaging ten points a game. He was what. 59 percent, I think, on, yeah, on three-point three, yeah. shots. I mean, he was shooting fifty-nine percent. He he did not get a field goal attempt in the game and played. He played and 35 it, You know, minutes. and that's uh, – with, with Cole, it's not that hard to get a field goal attempt because, the, you know, there's a lot of people that can yeah. shoot over him. And, and, uh, well, that kid uh, had So, trouble. like, bigger guards that yeah. are good offensive players, it's hard for us to put Cole on because they'll just be able to shoot over the top of him. And so, uh, the, he's one of the very few point guards that we've been able just to put Cole on. Yeah. And Cole did a great job on He him. sure did. I mean, that was a, it was a big point in the game that probably got overlooked by a lot of people. The young man didn't score a point, didn't even get a shot. And, and Cole was totally the better 
point guard that well, night. Well, and, and he's, you know, Cole's a, a fourth year fourth year junior yeah. and, and th but this is what i mean by experience yeah. you know it's just different it, it you know this is the that that was the, uh, that kid's fourth conference game ever cole's a fourth year junior and so that that should be the case the other thing uh, both chris and i noticed is uh, uh, bill on the first half took a shot that was probably ill-advised and and cole ran over to him and said settle down bill settle yeah. down and <laughs> I, I thought that was great i mean you yeah. know you need that kind of leadership on the court yeah, we, we do, and, 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 you know, Cole definitely is one of those guys, and, and he needs to be able to tell people, uh, uh, you know, exactly what – even if it's an older guy, he can't yep. be out there trying to make friends all the time. No. You know, Grant was that way for us last year. Grant really didn't care what everybody else thought. Uh, you know, he was going to lead the team, and if he thought something was wrong, he let them know. Well, coming after that loss at Detroit, you know, it was good to see them bounce back like they did and, and show some leadership and some courage in that game. And, you know, Coach, I took a look at Loudon Love before the game, and, I mean, you've heard that term before, you know, loaded for bear. Well, he was for the Golden Grizzlies in that game. I think well, for the first time this year, he is really focused. Yeah, he, now he, he's been inconsistent without question this year, and I think, I think ever since the injury, uh, you know, he struggled to get back <clears throat> in shape. Now, I thought he played pretty good at Detroit, yes. and then he, then he tweaked yeah, his ankle. Yeah. Uh, but he probably was a little tired of me talking about uh, Xavier Hill Mays and just how, uh, you know, th this is a team that, that plays through a, a post player that plays with a lot of confidence. He gives everybody else confidence. And so he got tired of me talking about that, I'm sure, because really it was being aimed at him. And I think that he knew that. And, and so, uh, you know, it's just my way of trying to get him ready. Boy, it, he definitely answered the call that we talked about earlier about the loose ball. Not only one, but two that I can remember he went after in this game, 6'9", 275 pounds going on the floor. I wouldn't want to be near that. Yeah, and normally, you know, if he gets his hands near the ball or on it, it's, it's going to be his. You know, if there's a tie-up, he can pretty much lift somebody off the floor. And so uh, he, if he gets near the ball with, the, with as good hands as he has, it's usually his. Now, I've noticed here lately, too, uh, talking about Mark Hughes, seems to be more aggressive offensively. I thought he played fairly well against Detroit and even better against Oakland. You look at his line. Yeah, and I guess I, you know, I haven't really noticed in terms, you know, because because Mark, you talk about consistency uh, of all our players. I know exactly what I'm going to get out of Mark almost every single game, yep. and uh, uh, and so I, I almost don't even pay attention to him anymore because I know uh, what we're going to get, and and so I didn't even look back in terms of like because I, I really don't pay attention to stats. Sometimes I don't even look at the stats after a game. Like I didn't look at the stats after this past game, and a lot of times I don't look at our stats, but I know exactly what I'm going to get from Mark. Well, Bill Wampler also, it seems like you know he can get a layup early in a game whatever just seems to settle him in see the ball go through the net and I mean he was really shooting the ball extremely well in the second half at Oakland yeah and and you know I think for Bill that, that that's what it needs to be he uh, again uh, be, because he struggled and his percentage is not great you know I've asked him to, to find better shots you know and I tell all our guys if, if particularly if you're a three-point shooter if you're not shooting 40 percent from three then you need to shoot less of them and you need to shoot better ones and uh, so, so I think that they're all trying to figure that out. Uh, you know, and so a guy like Cole who's shooting 43% as I look down here, he, he can shoot more. I'm all for it. If you're shooting 43%, you're trying to find threes to shoot. If you're shooting below that, shoot less of them, find better ones to shoot. I was talking to uh, Coach Merriweather before her show, and uh, she talked about, you know, consistency on the floor. Of course, you had to put up with the uh, Jalen Hall injury. You have to maneuver things, get guys used to that motion offense. It takes a little time for a little consistency to work together with the guys on the floor, does it not? It does, and motion takes a long time. Uh, the, it just does. It, it, a lot of times, and, and every year, motion's different because you have different players and you have different strengths, and so it looks different from year to year, and it takes a while because it takes a while to meld all these guys together. You know, Coach, this – doesn't have anything to do with the two games, but something happened over the weekend that it, I, I sent the people over to you. But I was sitting in the restaurant in the morning, and this couple uh, said to me, said, are you, are you with the Wright State basketball team? And I said, yeah, I, I do the games on radio. And, and she says, well, I, I just want to tell you, I, I'm so impressed with this, these young men. She says, my husband and I travel all over. We're in a lot of hotels with teams, and these guys have represented your university at the highest level, and I just want you to know that. And I said, well, you need to go talk to the coaches. And I sent them over to you <laughs> yeah. and Coach Cooley, and I thought that was great. Yeah, she came over and talked to us also, and it's always great to hear those things. And, uh, the, the, I mean, there are already things that we know. And, and uh, I think, you know, probably sometimes when somebody ends up in a hotel with a team, yeah. you know, it, it can get loud or it can get a little yeah. bit out of control. And generally our guys are not like that. I think, uh, number one, because of the kind of kids we recruit, number two, probably because 
of what we would do to them if they did. So, well, <laughs> but that's a reflection on your on the coaches. I mean, you know, because she didn't I, have to. Honestly, do that. I, I do think it's a reflection more on the kids than it yeah. is us. Yeah. I really yeah. do. <laughs> well, speaking of which, you said at the end of the game, I thought it was interesting when you said when Coach Campy came across to shake your hand at the end of the game, offering your team a compliment. I thought it was very nice of him to say what he said. Repeat. Yeah, that. he he said it's your, your kids play like champions today, and and I, I think that they did. Uh, you know, obviously we were we were pick to win the league and do very well and uh it's been a struggle i'm just looking down here you know win loss win loss win win loss loss and so we it's been hard for us to put anything together uh and it's been frustrating for the players for sure and and uh you know with a stretch here of five games in a row on the road we've, we've knocked out two of those it, it, it's going to be very difficult to put something like that together but but i think you know when when you take a loss on the road and you have a chance to bounce back and play a team that was three and oh uh, it was great to see our kids respond the way they did. You know, well, Coach, when people come up to me and they say, well, what's wrong? You know, what do they need to do? It's been that kind of inconsistent. And I said, I repeat what you have told me many times when I ask you this. You say, listen, if you knew what it was, it would be that easy and you can fix it. <laughs> well, there's no question about that. I, you know, it's, it's, it's a mixture of things. And we're not, you know, we're just not going to go back through the litany. But, but uh, we are, you know, I, like I, I look at, I mean, and, and Clint and I were talking about this today, you know, if, if we had Grant Basile, we, 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 yes. we would be able to play Bill Moore to three. Uh, and, 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 you know, we would be able to be bigger. I mean, there's all kinds of things. I mean, when you lose, when you lose a couple of players, it changes the entire dynamic of the team. Uh, and it, it has forced us into some situations where we're putting teams out there that's not our strongest team, and that's just the way it is. And so uh, we, we don't even think about that stuff anymore, but, but when people want to talk about it, that's what comes up in my mind. Well, it gives other people opportunities. Yeah, you know, we talked a little bit about this after the game the other day, the fact that I think the tough non-conference schedule you played, and if you look at the teams that we played, Murray State, Indiana State, Kent State, Toledo, I mean, those guys have all got – two or three losses at the most in very competitive teams. I think it had an effect on our on our kids' confidence. I do too. Uh, you know, and again, you put that schedule together thinking you're going to be at full strength. You don't ever uh, think, well, what if we get hurt? Uh, yeah. we, we want to challenge ourselves. And like I said before, it's the toughest. If, number one, it was, we, we know this to be the case. We had the toughest non-conference schedule of anybody in our league, without question. I mean, we know that based on the rankings. Uh, and, and number two, we wanted to challenge ourselves. And it's the toughest schedule that I've ever coached against, for sure. Uh, you know, in so many close games. I mean, yeah. but, but you talk about all the time, would have, could have, should have. I mean, you <laughs> yeah, did. And yeah, that's the way it is. And our record sits where it is. Yeah. The, the key now is to pull ourselves together and do a great job in league. I think Saturday was a great step forward. Now uh, we'll yeah, see. I do, too. It, it, sorry, I think it gave our kids a lot of confidence. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, honestly, the way that we played against UIC is, is poorly as we shot the ball and still gave ourselves a chance to win that basketball yeah. game. Uh, it, it, it confirmed yes. to me that I think we have the best team. And we're going to operate that way. We're going to talk to our guys that way. We're going to expect that from them. Other than the confidence which this team gained, as you talked about, from the win at Oakland, what are some of the things that you can tell by looking back at the tape again, if you've seen it already, uh, that you think that is doing better now uh, than they had done earlier this season? Well, one of the things we're doing is we're, we're a lot better defensively uh, now than we were two, two or three weeks ago. Our, our kids are really starting to get it. I think defensively we're really starting to play well. Uh, uh, we're rebounding the ball well. There, there's some things we're doing. I mean, our kids are playing hard. Like I've been saying, even through all this, through the frustrations, they've practiced well, they've done a great job, and they're playing their tails off. And, and as a coach, there's, there's only so much you can ask for. Some of it's X's and O's. Some of it, it lies on me and, our, and, our, and the coaching staff. Uh, but our players, I feel like, are doing everything they can do. You know, a perfect example of that is what happened to Xavier May, Hill Mays the other day. He had two offensive fouls trying to fight for position on, on Loud and Love, and that's oh, partly it was, it was on Parker. Parker, it was on okay. Parker, yeah. We, we just wouldn't let him catch the ball, you know, and I kind of stayed at the officials a little bit. But, but we were working hard to make him work harder to catch the yeah. ball. And, uh, you know, he, one time his elbow slid underneath Parker's throat. Official saw it, called the foul. I mean, yeah. that, you know, you just you, – uh, if you just work hard and you keep your mouth shut, yeah. uh, the officials yeah. will, will do their job. And, uh, uh, you know, they're not out there trying to call for anybody else, but yeah. they're also human. And the, 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 the less you bother them, I, I think, it, the better it is for your basketball team. Yeah, because then when you do say something, they'll take notice and of they it. they listen. If you're just constantly yeah. yapping yes. at them, they don't want to hear any of it. That's right. Well, uh, they let the guys play, you know, the other day. You know, it was a very physical but the, game. And that's but fine. you adjust to I'm that. all for that. You adjust to yeah, it. Yeah, I'm all right. for letting people play and, and uh, if the as game's going to be physical. As long as they're consistent. And they are. They, they generally are. 
uh, it's not a job that I would want for sure. All right, Coach, our time has run out, but we got two players with us here tonight. We have Cole Gentry and also Parker Ernsthausen. Stay with us. we got another 30 minutes of the Scott Nagy Show as we continue from Fly Boys here in Beaver Creek. This is Wright State University Basketball. What does it mean to be a pioneer reaching your full potential? It means being bold. No, bigger than bold, monumental. Having no fear in the face of adversity, essential. They doubt us, inconsequential. Where would we be if we see set the first, you can't do that. You see, we set out to be what we see in you. Innovators, free thinkers, seekers of truth. At Wright State, our goal remains central. We are the pioneers of potential. Welcome to Coach Brown, and we're joined by one of the seniors on the Wright State basketball squad this year. It's Parker Ernsthausen from Bowling Green, Ohio, a fifth-year senior for the Raiders. Now 2-2 two and two in the league. They're 8-9 and nine overall. Take on Northern Kentucky coming up this Friday night at 7 o'clock at bb &T Arena at Northern Kentucky. And Parker, back with us again here earlier on in the season. You know, we're about the midway point right now. We're four games into the Horizon League schedule. Uh, just want to get your thoughts, you know, and this uh, being your final season here at Wright State, how things are going for this team, and congratulate you on how well that you have been playing this year, taking on different roles. And, you know, your game against Oakland, I thought you played, you, know, you look at the line stat-wise, it doesn't stick out. Coach mentioned it during the game, but all the little things you did in that game to help this team win. Yeah, I mean, I think as far as the season went so far, obviously we've uh – We've taken some lumps here and there, lost some close ones. Um, but, I mean, I think it's all part of the growing process. And, you know, if we can get our best team together by March, you know, that I think that's what matters. So, you know, Oakland, a huge step forward. Um, I think a lot of guys played well there. A lot of guys hustle plays. I mean, Big Lou gets on the floor there to start the game. And I think that, that pretty much set the tone for everybody else. All right, low point, you know, after the Detroit game. What you guys do? Did you do something as a team to get together that day before you prepared for Oakland? Um, nothing really special. I, I think some of us talked about maybe, you know, just making sure our chemistry was good, you know, put the phones down a little bit, talk to each other on the bus and things like that. But, you know, it wasn't anything big. I think just knowing, you know, we're a good team and, you know, obviously that the Detroit game, that guy had a, you know, a really good game that kind of carried him. But um, just bouncing back and that's what we did. You know, against uh, against Detroit, we talked with Coach Nagy about this. The start of the game, uh, the strategy was to put you at the high post, put Loudon inside, and then uh, Alan Vest was on the baseline, and we just picked it apart uh, with good strategy there. And then, of course, Loudon got a, got hurt, and it, it kind of went sideways for us. But uh, I, I, how do you like playing? Uh, you know, it's unusual to see a six ten, six eleven guy play all the way up at the top of the key. You did yeah. it down at Mississippi State, and and you've done it. Uh, at, at yeah, from time times. to time. Yeah. No, I, I kind of like that spot. It's a little awkward spot for a lot of people, even for me, um, you know, because you're kind of in between and no one's really guarding you. But I enjoy it. I can see a lot and um, just trying to find the open man in the zone because obviously when you catch it in there, that's that's the toughest part for the defense. You, you have uh, <clears throat> you have made some incredibly nice bounce passes in traffic to guys cutting to the basket uh, time and time again. I, uh, I remember one game you had five assists and I think in the first half and, and they were all on bounce passes and you know that's a kind of a pet peeve of mine guys try to throw a chest pass as opposed to a bounce pass and I think it's a real effective pass and, and you you have uh, perfect, perfected it yeah I mean I, I guess I don't think about it but I guess a lot of them are bounce passes I mean I, I think it's tough for the defense to get to those especially I mean Everybody knows. I mean, the other team's screaming that backdoor cut as soon as I have the ball because they know I'm, I'm looking to throw that cut. But, um, and you know, that's a, especially on the backdoor, Coach Cooley, Coach Nagy talk about it all the time. It's a tough cut to defend. And, you know, if I can just deliver it out in front of the guards, we're athletic enough to go get it and usually results in a good play. You know, most, most uh, schools uh, keep track of, of dunks. Wright State <laughs> ought to keep track of charges taken because if that was, yeah. <laughs> if, if that was a stat, uh, you would have the career lead and you'd have the season lead. Yeah, no I'm, act I'm actually keeping track myself. So I know your mom if, is. If, yeah, I know she is. <laughs> if you guys are following along at home, we're at 21 right now. Okay, so. all right, we got that down. Yeah, we wrote so it down. Keep, we'll write that down that. and uh, only, only count the ones where they actually run me over, not, not like the post-up <laughs> files or anything like that. So we'll see where that ends up at the end of the season. Defensively, uh, you drew uh, Xavier Hill Mays, uh, one of the best players in the league. He's put up some big numbers this year. What was it like for you, especially down the post? He's a very physical guy who can step back and hit jump shots. Yeah, no, he's a really good player. I really respect his game. Probably one of the top players in the Rising League, obviously, by his numbers. But, um, yeah, I mean, he, I, I don't know. He probably got a couple of cheap ones. I really didn't even know, you know, they called a foul for a couple of those. But, um, 
you know, just trying to fight around, and that's what the coaches say. You know, you keep fighting around, you know, the referee will see that and, you know, maybe give you a call here or there, and we were fortunate enough to get a couple of those. So, you know, that's just that's what they teach, and I just try to implement that, and that's how it worked out. You, you know, uh, guarding him was, <clears throat> was probably good preparation for what you're going to face oh, on yeah. Friday night because uh, Xavier and, and uh, Ben Mc, uh, uh, Drew McDonald are very similar players in that they mm -hmm. can go out on the floor and hit the jump shot and then also – to take you to the basket and, and score inside. And, and he, Xavier, Xavier is, uh, he's a heck of an inside player because he's very, very physical. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think those guys probably play one of the most identical games inside, outside. So probably a pretty good matchup for us uh, leading into the big game against Northern Kentucky here. Well, you take a look at Hill Mays and physically, you would think that he'd be more physical than McDonald. And McDonald equally is just as physical, uh, physical as Hill Mays, even though he may not be as bulky as right. Hill Mays. Yeah, definitely. Drew McDonald, you know, knows how to use his body. Not not the most athletic guy, but, you know, he, he gets a shoulder into you and he's going to get it up and get get the shot he wants. So, you know, we'll work on that this week, whether, you know, if we're going to double him or just go one-on-one -on -one and maybe mix it up a little bit. Very competitive. You know, Northern Kentucky last year, played a couple of coast games with them, you know, won those games in the past. You're very familiar now, being your fifth season here, you know, at Wright State. You have an idea what to expect when you go down and play the Norse this coming Friday. It's going to be a tough game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the environment's going to be great like it always is down there. And, you know, we're looking forward to it. We played in some big environments this year, whether it was, um, oh, shoot, Kent State yeah. or uh, yeah. Murray State earlier this year. So I think especially for the young guys, those games were important to kind of get them, get them ready for this game because, you know, there'll be a lot of people there, it'll be a loud atmosphere, and it, it'll be a good one. We have some people that go down to that. I mean, Northern Kentucky is probably the one school that, uh, yeah, there's a couple fans here that indicate they're going. But, I mean – our history with Northern Kentucky, I mean, of course, you have only played them since you've been here, but, boy, I can remember we used to play them in Regents Hall. Those were big battles, and it's a close enough school. A lot of our fans get a chance to go down, and it is a great atmosphere. It's a great arena to play in, mm -hmm. and it will be. It's an important game. It's on ESPN, so uh, it'll be an exciting thing to take part in. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be great. The rivalry we've kind of built up here, yeah. I think it's been great for us, great for the Ryzen League. Yeah. You know, I think they've been a great addition to the league, obviously very competitive, and you know, it'll be a fun one. Is that something the players think about? You talk about rivalry. You just mentioned I was going to ask you that question. Since they are travel partners now and the success these teams have had in the last couple of years, do you think of it as a rivalry? Get up a little more for this game than others? Um, a little bit. I think it's more just because, you know, they're at the top of the league yeah. right now. You know, I, you know, if we're both maybe at the bottom of the league or one or the other, maybe it's a little different. But, you know, with, with them being, you know, picked top of the league and us top of the league, I think that, that really increases the rivalry for at least these past couple of years. Yeah, this is, you know, this is off the subject of the Northern Kentucky game, but you've gone, you know, we've played, what, 17 games now. Who, who's the best inside player that you've had to defend this year of all the people we've defended? I, I know that's an off-the-top <laughs> yeah, question. No, that's a good a question. Um, I yeah. guess, I mean, really, Xavier Hills May is I, just the one that comes to mind the quickest. I'm sure there's – been some other players but you know he knowing how to use his body as versatile as he is inside outside you know I really respect his game I like the way he plays you know I was kind of surprised he got that technical because he usually plays within himself a little bit and you know I think that was a cheap one too I didn't really know what he said and didn't seem like he did much but I really think that he's he's probably been the best player we played so far we'll see you know after Northern Kentucky you know the thing about mid-major basketball is you run into a lot of guys six seven six eight that are very skilled now at the highest level in the power five you know the, everybody's got a, a six nine six ten six eleven center and that's a different position but six seven six eight guys that can do some things are are much much more difficult to guard yeah absolutely I mean our game plan changes especially if you can go inside outside um you know, how we're going to guard you on ball screens, how we're going to guard you inside. So it definitely changes, you know, especially if you have a skilled guy like that. We're talking with Parker Ernsthausen, fifth-year senior here at Wright State. The Raiders play Northern Kentucky coming up on Friday night at 7 o'clock, an ESPN game. If you can't watch it, Coach Brown and I will have it on the radio on 106.5 FM. And, Coach, uh, I was going to talk to Parker, you know, about defense. And that's something that, you know, you're really focused on right now. And Coach Nagy talked about it uh, just a few moments ago about how he thinks the team is coming together a little better now defensively from what he's seen on tape. Yeah, I mean, I think our rotations are a lot better, you know, coming off guys, whether we're doubling and everybody rotating. Um, I think the young guys struggled in transition a little bit to start the year, you know, figuring out that, you know, just because you're guarding this guy to start the game doesn't mean in transition, you know, you're picking up who's ever closest to you. So I think figuring that out's helped us out a lot in transition. And uh, our tags and rotations have, have definitely been better. You and Alan both have been very helpful to the younger players, too. I watch you in practice. You're able to help them put them in the right position. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's just coming from an old, you know, a player, your teammate, older guy, I think that helps a lot. You know, you hear the coaches' voices over and over and over. And, you know, I think if, if somebody that's, that's in it with you can kind of tell you, hey, like, you know, why don't you have your feet like this or this? It'll help you out. You know, I, I used to have the same issue. I think that's a little bit more valuable. You talked about rotations, and a lot of people – probably might not understand what you're talking about there but you guys hedge all ball screens which means you you kind of temporarily double team the ball screen and when you do that you have to have rotation at the basket talk about that yeah so I mean especially with good ball handlers or a good skilled center like you were talking about you know we're going to come out in hard hedge and then you know the backside guy is going to come in and, and fill that void for a little bit when I get back to my man so just going through that thought process and kind of, you know, playing more team defense instead of worrying about how many points your man has or your man standing open in the corner. It, you know, it's a tough mental thing to get and it takes guys, you know, a couple months, sometimes a couple years to, to fully grasp that. Yeah, and I, 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 Coach Nagy talked about it when he was on about, I think our perimeter in terms of keeping people in front of us has gotten better here recently. Yeah, just trusting guys are going to be in your gaps. You know, Alan Vest has been in the gaps steal, you know, all year this year. It seems like he's basically lived there, and that's why he's playing really well and has <laughs> as many steals as he does. And, you know, Matt Vest kind of kind of taught him that, and Alan finally caught on to that, I think. And, you know, Coach D used to talk to Alan all about that. And, you know, I think he, he's playing really well this year through that. You know, I was going to ask you too, uh, Parker. Uh, I know people weren't there. I was there to practice the other day. And you had two really good dunks in practice. You can dunk. I can see. I saw it for myself. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you saw the the video of me smiling at the camera afterwards too on that. But uh, <laughs> I actually I dunked earlier, and I Jay Frank, our trainer, was kind of laughing at me coming down the floor that I had just dunked it, and all of a sudden behind my knees started cramping up, and I about fell down, and I've been icing it for like three or four days, so I think that's yeah. enough of that. I know that's disappointing, but, man, I can't go down on a dunking in practice. I got a couple months left here. I, I can't sacrifice that. So. And, and what we know about uh, Jason Franklin, our athletic trainer at Wright State, he doesn't want to have to do more than he has to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jay Frank's definitely uh, not looking for you to come in his office. So no, Jay Frank's a great guy. We, we can joke back He's and excellent. forth, so he'll let me hear about that probably the rest of the year, but that's kind of a funny story we have. And for your mom and dad, uh, the uh, Detroit and Oakland trip's great because they can just go home each time back and forth to Bowling Green, right? Yeah, so they, yeah, they just came day trip, came up, came back, and some of my other cousins got to actually come up and see the game at Oakland, so that was good. And so, and then they actually got to, they flew out to go on vacation right afterwards, so it all worked out for them well. So are they going to be here Friday? Oh, yeah, they're going to be okay. here Friday. Yeah, they don't miss now. a game. Yeah, yeah, they now, your dad it. has not missed one game, has he? No, he hasn't missed anything here. So, you know, we're about almost through the halfway point of the league here. So he's got a couple, a couple more left, and hopefully he can make it. How many, how many classes are you taking? Um, You're so, in graduate school, Yeah, right? graduate. So I'll just have one this spring for eight weeks, and it'll be online. So I'm, I'm nice? living a tough life uh, this spring. <laughs> I'll be in my room hanging out in the gym, and that's about it. So. Well, you deserve it, though. You deserve it. You yeah, this is kind of how I had it set up. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to work out well. That's great. Good planning on your part, Parker. Thanks yeah. again for uh, Thank joining you. us for here tonight. Me. Appreciate Got it. Got our point guard coming Always up, uh, Cole Gentry, coming our way as we continue with the Scott Nagy Show. We're at Flyboys in Beaver Creek. We'll be back. This is Wright State University Basketball.
And Coach Jim Brown and our good friends here at Fly Boys in Beaver Creek, the home of the Scott Nagy Show and Katrina Merriweather Show. Heard most Mondays throughout the season. Wright State men's basketball, 8-9 and overall, 2-2 two and two in league play, still on the road. They're in a stretch of five consecutive games away from Wright State's Nutter Center. Be back home on January 24th. And uh, after that, uh, they got Northern Kentucky coming up Friday, as I mentioned, and then go to Youngstown State and Cleveland State before they're back home on the 24th against Milwaukee and Green Bay a day later. Well, as promised, with us right now, the Richard Jr. point guard of the Wright State Raiders, Cole Gentry, now joining us here at Flyboys in Beaver Creek. And, you know, Coach Brown, I, I don't think they're, the whole team was real extremely happy after the Oakland game, but I don't think anybody was happier than this guy right here sitting between us. The smile on his face, I mean, it pretty much told us, you know, how this team <laughs> felt after that win. Cole, congratulations. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, it was uh, – Obviously, it's been a little frustrating, uh, winning one, losing one, winning one, losing one like that. So, uh, felt felt pretty good to get our first good road win. Um, obviously, they were three and zero in conference going into that game, so we knew it was going to be a tough one. And I think that was probably our most complete game we've played this season so far. What can you say made the difference? Coach Brown talked about it with Coach Nagy and also on the air during the game, but when Loudon went after that loose ball, it just seemed like it just put a spark into everyone. Yeah, for sure. And there was a couple. He got it the one early and then he got on the floor I think two more times too he did. and um yeah it's just things like that uh don't necessarily show up in the the stats like there's no stat for getting the loose ball getting a jump ball and keeping possession like that but uh it just it changes the whole game it changes every the way everybody is playing it changes the way the other team it affects them because now they're maybe arguing with each other because one guy didn't get on the loose ball so Stuff, little things like that are the things we got to do to make sure that we can keep making steps to getting these big wins that we need. Another example of that, but uh, on the, uh, the the minus side, would be fact, what happened against Detroit, out to a 19-10 to 10 lead, successful getting the ball inside to Loudon, tweaked his ankle a little bit, came out of the game. Davis was just hitting everything. Anytime he touched the ball, he was just hitting everything that night. But it just seemed like things changed at that point. Yeah, uh, it's it's tough. He's Loudon's been dealing with the ankle for about two weeks now, and I think he's getting better. So it's probably it's probably frustrating for him to you know get better, get better, and then kind of tweak it a little bit. And uh, like you said, uh, Antoine Davis had an incredible game in that game. Is um, he's making some tough shots, and he's a heck of a player. So. Uh, we just we watched the film, we learned from it, and then um, I think we rebounded well at Oakland. So That had to be difficult, though, to be able to see something like that, you know, when it happened. And a credit to you guys for coming back so quickly and playing probably the most complete game all year against Oakland. Yeah, it wasn't easy to watch, obviously. Uh, anytime you lose by 20 points, whether it's at home or on the road, you're not going to feel good about it. And uh, he was making, like I said, he was making some good shots, tough shots, and He's a good player, and but that doesn't mean it was easy for us to watch, obviously. So I think I do think we uh, responded well, though, at Oakland. You've been playing a lot of minutes this year. You seem like you're doing okay uh, with it. You're one of the more well-conditioned uh, players on the team uh, this year because, yeah, you're tired a little bit, but it seems like you're held up pretty well. Yeah, um, I think a lot of credit goes to, you know, our off-season conditioning stuff and um, – I like to run on my own a little in off season just to make sure that um, you don't want to have to worry about your conditioning. That's one thing right. I've always thought. You don't want to have to feel – you don't want to have to, like, ask to come out of the game because you're tired because then um, you, it's hard to get in a flow. So that's something I try to make sure that I don't have to think about is my conditioning. That is about dis discipline. You know, you look at your stats, uh, Cole, you're 3-1 you're to one on assists. Uh, the only thing I think you need to probably work on a little bit is your free throw shooting. <laughs> Now, you had to bring it up. He's 49 for 52 on the season. Uh, and, you know, as a, know. As, a point guard, <laughs> as a point guard, I mean, uh, I mean if, you, if, you're, if you're a young player and, and you want to look at a position to play, you, you would be a shining example of what you need out of a point guard. You don't turn it over. Uh, you had to be licking your chops on Saturday, as I told you, uh, <laughs> after the game. If you finally had a guy that was your size, you've been going against 6'2", 6'3", guys, very quick, very athletic. And, and that young man was a good player, but you just totally shut him down. And that, that was a big, significant part in that game. Yeah, um, yeah you're right. Did you Most take that as a challenge? I mean, I mean, uh, I, and he always do, but, I mean, the point guard, on, it's like the quarterback on a football team. I mean, if you can disrupt him, and, and you just did a great job disrupting him. All, he, he, never, he never even got a smell at taking a shot the entire game. 
Yeah, like you said, um, every game brings a different challenge depending on who you're guarding, who's guarding you and stuff like that. And um, our coaches do a great job of just giving us a game plan to go to know and go over on our own so we can be locked in for the game. And um, obviously the game plan against him, he was shooting, I think, 60% from three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on, pretty, on a lot of attempts, so it was – pretty clear that he was a really good shooter so we didn't want to give him any open looks any um didn't want to have any we call them busts where you kind of screw up a switch or something and he right. gets a wide open shot and then that's how good offensive players get going sometimes so uh we was just kind of being locked in and um just following the game plan that our coaches gave us do you uh, uh i noticed a, a couple times on saturday they went behind the screen do you is that something that you look for that you recognize you have the green light when they go behind the screen to shoot the three because you've done that several times this year yeah it's something um me and uh coach cooley one of our assistants something we work on a lot is um you know if people are going to go under screens then you're going to have space to shoot and it's something that uh i work on and um and we usually run a, a few ball screens early in the game to kind of figure out what their uh, c coverage will be. And it was pretty er evident early on that they were just going under. So I kind of got – kind of saw that and then got in a nice little rhythm and then was able to hit a few. So Have you ever seen the Globetrotters play? I, maybe when I was little, I think I went. <laughs> well, well, I'll tell you what. You <laughs> can play for ago. them right now because I, 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 there's been several times this year where you've just dribbled around, dribbled around, dribbled around, dribbled around. It's and, like a cone drill. Yeah, like a cone drill, and then you find a shot. I mean, uh, or you find a teammate for a shot. It's, uh, it, 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 you're amazing handling the ball in traffic. Uh, but I just wondered if you'd ever watch the Globetrotters because that's what they do. They dribble, 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 and find a teammate or take a shot. Yeah, I think maybe when I was uh, like five or six years old, I saw him. But, uh, yeah, I uh, appreciate that the coaches, you know, allow me to kind of keep my dribble and uh, kind of try to find something that's open. Well, so. there's a difference between dribbling too much and dribbling to find something. And, and, and there's a fine line there because the problem with dribbling is when you're dribbling the basketball, your teammates don't know what's Cole going to do. Is he going to shoot it? Is he going to keep dribble? But you, you – they, they know. They've been with you long enough, and that hasn't been a problem at all. And a lot of times, most of the time, it's resulted in a basket. Yeah, and I think a lot of credit goes – all the credit goes to my teammates. They, uh, I've been playing with a lot of the guys for, you know, two years now, two and a half years. And so they know me. They, I know what they like to do. And so I think that's a, it's a good point that I think a lot of the guys, we know how to play off each other. Yeah. So it makes it look better, obviously, when it works out. Plus, you have uh, – you got two pretty good screeners in Loudon Love and Parker Ernst <laughs> oh, I mean, sure, yeah. they take up a lot of room. Yeah. I mean, the, the other day you got a shot off, and there really wasn't a screen. It, Loudon was just standing, standing there. He was just in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, it's uh, – yeah, I don't think – probably those guys don't get enough credit for that because um, really all the, bo all the ball handler has to do is get their guy to the screen, and those are the guys getting hit and then rolling, or Parker's case, he's usually popping and making threes. So – uh, yeah, those guys probably deserve all the credit. You know, and while you're talking about it, another thing that is, is a credit to you is the fact that we haven't had any of those ball screen turnovers this year. Where And it's always the guy with the ball's fault. You know, the guy comes up to set a screen, the guy puts it on the floor too soon, and he's still moving. We haven't had any of I can't remember the last one we had where we got an offensive ball screen foul, and that's tribute to you. and. And the other guys that are handling the ball a lot. Yeah, and I think also our coaches, that's, some, that's not something that just kind of happens. We definitely go over that a little bit too. So we make sure that in practice guys are waiting for ball screens and waiting for screens so we're not getting yeah. fouls. All right, Cole Gentry, point guard of Wright State basketball team, joining us here. We have one final break. We'll come back with a final word of the Scott Nagy Show when we continue here at Flyboys in Beaver Creek. Stay with us. This is Wright State University basketball. Hi, I'm Bob Grody, class of 1976 and former Raiders player and coach. Did you know that once you're a Wright State grad, you're automatically a member of the Alumni Association? As a member, tap into the Wright State Network, attend the local alumni event, and earn discounts and special offers. Log on to WrightStateAlumni.com and make the most of your membership. Thank you and go Raiders. I'm Chris Collins back with Point guard at Wright State, Retcher Jr., Cole Gentry. And Cole, we've got about a minute or so here, but we were talking during that quick break about uh, you had a point during the game at Oakland where you uh, 
taking some leadership uh, by going up, giving some encouragement to Bill Wampler, whatever you said, it must have worked because he was like on fire in that second half. Yeah, and it's just a lot of it's just telling him, hey, we trust you 100%. I don't think he was shooting the ball great at that point in the game. And it's just telling him, hey, you're, if not our best shooter, one of them. So just keep shooting. Everybody on the team trusts you to make shots. So it's just telling him, don't pass up shots. Don't be, just keep being aggressive. And then, like you saw, he made like, I'm, oh, not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it was because I told him that. But no, like no, you but saw, still. Like you saw he made five or six in a row, I think. And it was great for our team. And we needed every single one of them. They were huge shots that he made in the second half late in that game. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think they cut it to nine. Yeah. And then he made a three. And we kind of got it back up yep. to about exactly. 18. You know, and show that trust, too, as we saw in the highlights earlier when Coach Nagy was here. One time you were taking the ball down the right lane line. You drew a double team. He was open out on the left wing. And you fired it to him. He was shot ready. And he knocked it down. That was a big one at that point. Yeah, he's such a good shooter. And he works on it so much that he should never be – tentative or passing up shots because he's one of our better shooters. So. Is that something that you take into account when you start out a game? You just want to get everybody involved before, you know, you really start doing something offensively? Um, I don't know if it's something I would say that it's it makes sense just when you think about it like that. And I think that when guys are getting touches and if guys score early, they obviously kind of get, get into the flow and get their confidence going. So it's good when you can get Bill or Lou or Mark or Skyler or even pa or Parker, any of those guys, if you can get them a wide open shot and they can and they knock it down, then everybody kind of gets confidence from that. So it's yeah. good. You mentioned about Big Lou, loud and love. Uh, to me, he seemed like what we saw a lot last year, this past weekend, just by looking at him, how he just seemed so focused and just looked very aggressive out there. You know, obviously going after loose balls and just basically owning the boards in both games when he was out there. Oh yeah, he he, he was he was great at Oakland and it was the same the year before as at Oakland too. But uh, yeah, he's he's I think he's getting healthier and he's going to start playing like he did last year. Cole, we got to get out of here right now. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Congratulations thus far. Good luck against Northern Kentucky. It's going to be quite the struggle coming up on Friday. Yep, we'll, we're gonna, we'll be ready for it. All right. Coach Brown, we'll see you again on Friday. Absolutely. Remember, the game's on ESPN this coming Friday, 7 o'clock. We'll be on the air at 645 here on the radio on 106.5. Thank you for listening and also watching on the stream tonight. And thank you, everybody, for coming out to Fly Boys here in Beaver Creek, the home of the Katrina Merriweather and Scott Nagy Show. This is Chris Collins saying thanks for watching and listening. We'll join you again next week.